Hello fans, it's Collins. We got another EverQuest video. This is EverQuest uh, Project 1999, classic EverQuest. Uh, so, in the last video, we were dinking around with Zilcor, and then we ran around with the Bard and just did some random stuff. Uh, today, I got a lot of people, a lot of people asking me about this swarm kiting crap that everybody does on P99. So, back in the day when EverQuest was live, uh, we used to do group kiting, um, but basically we did charm kiting. So you would charm a mob, you would grab a pack of mobs, charm one, send it into the whole pack, and then you would have an item that you could right click to instantly cast invis on you to kill your, to take, break the charm. So you would charm a mob, send it into a pack, when it's almost dead you break the charm, and then you throw your ranged dot on it, like this two inch chan of flame. Um, and then you pick the next mob, charm it, send it into the pack. Uh, the reason why we did that back in the day is because we had like single CPU computers, we had uh, you know dial-up internet connections and stuff like that. But with even though it's the same game, classic game request, you know I've got a four-core CPU, I've got a crazy graphics card, um, I've got you know cable internet. So I have the bandwidth, I have the the computer power, the frame rate to handle like 100 mobs in my face. <laughs> so uh, what our bards are doing now on this server, which they could have done on live if back in the day if they had the like a powerful gaming rig and a good internet connection, um, is swarm kiting. So uh, I'm just gonna go over some stuff and then I'll show you guys what that looks like. Why are there dervish cutthroats walking in pairs? Uh, anyhow. We are in the northern desert of Ro. This is classic EverQuest. Uh, there are uh, dervish cutthroats at this derv camp, and then there's an undead camp over there. And in classic, there was a Rahu top or something that spawned there, and I don't know how that works on P99, but I never see that guy there. Um, there's occasionally sand giants, and I killed that one. Um, he's got a lambent stone, but I already got one in the bank. So, for those of you who are somewhat familiar with uh, EverQuest, let's get into some Bard stuff, including some kiting. So, I mentioned this briefly before, but I have all these macros. So, this actions pane, you can have all these socials. All these on the first page are default. And then I have a bunch of stuff for dragging corpses. Uh, this is for doing quests. I have an incoming message you know, 50 or so mobs per message because I'm a bard. <laughs> we pull a lot of stuff. Um, I have a message for my pet to tell the group. I have a lock thing. My giant train message. <laughs> so uh, there are zone borders and you get like a loading screen when you go from one zone to another. Uh, so in dungeons, if you have more mobs than you can handle, people will run out of the dungeon and there's a bunch of mobs following you, it's like a train. So, uh, usually people announce that they have a train coming to the zone line when they're in a dungeon, and they do that so that if there's people at the zone line, they you know, know, know to move out of the way. So I have one of those messages. So too. I have these macros set up for all of my songs, and all of them look just like this. And you have one line that's forward slash stop song, and then you have cast whatever, and one is spell gem one, so it counts from one down. I'm using a custom UI called Duxa's UI, so it actually shows me the numbers here, but typically it's one to eight. On live, there's like, you can get nine and ten slots, and I think twelve, I don't know. But anyway, um, and stop song can also just be abbreviated slash ST. Uh, so I have song one, song uh, two, and then I usually always have these bottom slots are usually always filled up so with the same type of song. So I have a heel song, always in here and that's why it's actually called heel song and then I usually have a buff song so at my level this McVaxon's Berserker Crescendo is the best like group haste and it also has strength and AC so even if I'm in a group where someone else has a better haste spell and my song doesn't actually help with the haste the stats on it are still good uh, and then I have the Cellos Accelerando which is the speed song that lets me run really fast that's usually always in slot one, 
unless I'm in there's certain zones that are counted as indoor zones and you can't use run speed enhancements. So in that case, I'll put something else in there. Depends on what I'm doing. So this is kind of a soloing build. So I got uh, run fast. I got myself buff heals. This is a damage over times that uses a drum. So I cast it on this guy. He has full health now, but you'll see a message. He takes 48 damage from that, and it goes for like three or four ticks. So three or four of those 48 damage things, and then he'll die before then. But uh, And then I have Solo's Constant Chain, which slows his movement and attack speed. So right now he can catch me, but boom, now I've slowed him down. He can barely move. Well, he's casting spells, but he moves a lot slower. And then this an angstlet's appalling screech is a fear song, and it's area effect. Most of the bard area effect songs are centered on the bard. So if I cast this and there are no monsters in range, it won't do anything. But if I cast it too close to that snake, it would have feared him. And then this is another one of these damage over time things that uses drum. And then this is my charm. Uh, so. Sometimes if I'm running around the world or if I'm solo and stuff, I'll use these. Uh, this gives me the option to either use these two drum chants while I'm running around, or I can actually snare and sphere a mob and then it won't attack me because it's running away scared. Uh, but we're going to do some area effect stuff. So I have a couple different songs for that. This is Chords of Dissonance. You get this at level 2 and it uses... Um, it is. If we look at this, it says it's string based, so it's based on a stringed instrument case that I have this lute, it's uh, Lute of the Gypsy Princess, it has a modifier, this 21 means it does more damage if I'm using the lute. It also will do some damage if I don't have an instrument up, like if I put weapons in my hand, uh, so I have weapons up, and then if we had, we got something low level that we don't have to worry about, uh, you'll see the speed song goes slower when I'm just using that, so this thing's pretty low level, so before the thing was doing like 48 damage. This 32, if they're not, if they're running towards you, they do less damage. That, that's a dot nerf, they call it. Um, it kept people from doing certain things to abuse the system, but if I use this on this guy, and he's not, like, dodging, so he does, instead of 48, he does 23. And that's because I'm not using, I don't have the drum in my hand. So if we switch it out to the drum, it will change from 23 to 48. Um, switch this back. I don't even know. Will that take effect? So now it's in 23 again. And if you use running toward me, it only does 15. So, yeah, there's different ways that the damage over time spells or dots work. And that just happens to be the way that one works. And we'll just use two dots to get rid of them because we're done with this part of the tutorial. <laughs> And I don't have to double click these spell gems. Uh, you can actually go. Let's go. So these have spell gems in them. So I can actually use these. And these are all hotkeyed to numbers on your keypad. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, so this is 2, and I can hit the 2 key on the keyboard um, to start that, which is this McBaxon's. And it starts that song. So that's kind of how parts start out doing it, is they have all their songs in here. You just drag this out there, drag this out, and that will go there, and that will go there, uh, and then I can go, this song is number one, I can go one, and it plays that, and then you can use any key to stop a song, and then you start your next one, which is two, this healing song, Hymn of Restoration. So that's how bards work, um, but we're using these macros, so it's actually just one song now, so right now we're playing the healing song number two, and I can just hit the number one once, and it actually stops the song and starts it for me. Using these macros basically reduces the amount of keys I have to press in half. So instead of hitting 2 2 to get the heal song going, I just press number 2 once. And it starts up. Sometimes you'll get a missed note, um, which is sometimes called a fizzle because spellcasters in this game can fizzle. And those are based on skills you have. So for a bard, I have these instrument skills. Uh, on Project 1999, 
I actually have skills that cap above 200, but the user interface, the UI, doesn't show that correctly, so it shows 200. And I have forge bound to one of my turnkeys, so I just forged up some food because I've got in the inventory. Uh, so that's how the songs work. So basically, if my skills are high enough, I will be less likely to miss a note. I don't know, it's pretty hard to miss a note on this one. Uh, actually, there you go. If you miss a note, bring your song to a close. So it doesn't actually start the song, you have to try to start it again. Uh, and then, since I have all of these songs macroed, I also have a key binding, and I can go into my options, which by default is Alt-O, and I can look at keys, and so this movement right is D, so they use WSD, and it's red because it's also bound to something else, and it is bound to hotbar 3, which is this. So D presses this button, uh, which it can't, the refresh isn't up, and it also turns right. So every time I'm turning around while I'm running in the game, it will automatically forge for me. So the other key that I have is the spell casting. I have gem 8, which is the Cellos Accelerando, is tied to my R key, which is right next to W, A, S, and D. So I can use the letter R to stop a song if something's playing, because these macros try to start a new song. So if I go to start something up and I don't want to use it, there's something that's trying to run. I don't want it to go off, so I press the R key to stop that. And then I can press R again to bring up my run speed. So that's how the songs work. That's how I have them laid out in the UI. Uh, and I have... So this UI comes with this part built in, which is basically a copy of your inventory with the weapons at the top and then the range stuff down below. When I am not using throwing weapons, I have a stat modifier right now. It's this windy little Karen toy doesn't have a lot of stats, but it helps my stats out if I'm not using throwing weapons. Uh, so normally I would put my throwing weapons in here, um, and actually I like to leave this bag open a lot, which is actually in a different position in the user interface than the rest of the bags. But I digress. So that's some of the basics of doing the bard. If you uh, twist these songs, so I can go... I don't even have three buffs. I only have two buffs. So you saw me hitting one and then I'll hit 2, and um, I think the way the video is recording, this is off screen, but here's both buffs running at the same time because I'm twisting them. And there's actually the third buff, the speed song, which goes off, and then I have to double click to bring that back up. So there's three buffs running at the same time. That's called twisting. Um, you can basically multiply the power of your bard by using more than one song at once. They last so many seconds. You can usually do three consistently. Uh, you can do up to four if you get the timing right. Um, and sometimes with four, one icon will disappear every once in a while, but it doesn't really matter because of the, this timing is based on something called a server tick. So you'll get the server tick for all four songs, even though one is down for like a fraction of a second because it comes up before the server tick. Anyway, it's basically details, but basically you can twist four songs. If you're getting hit a lot, you'll get interrupted, and you probably just want to try to keep three up, maybe two. And depending on the song, the damaged creatures and stuff, they may resist, so you may be down to just using two songs. Alright, so while we're in the northern desert of Roe, hello spider. Spider regards me indifferently. Which means he doesn't hate me, so he's not going to attack me. This guy is dubious, which means he won't try to attack me either. Uh, this guy over here scowls at me ready to attack, which means if I walk up to him, he'll try to attack me. Um, but because he's much lower level than me, his color is green, and he won't actually try to attack me if I'm kind of close. He'll wait until I get right in his face, and then I'll try to beat me up. So I can be like this close, and he won't attack me. Uh, but anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to do some swarm kiting. So... Typically what I do for swarm kiting is I change this hotbar over to 3 and I have in the spot where this song normally is, I have a ranged weapon stuff. So if I'm just soloing, I'll be like this with the stat modifier in the range slot and then if I'm pulling stuff, I will use these shurikens, uh, which you can buy at like the Monk Guild Hall in Freeport or Kanos. It's also sold in Firion of 
Bay, and there's also some evil cities that sell it too. And you can get better ones, but these are cheap to buy, and um, I don't have to worry about trying to make them in a nice forest or some more of this cactus pulp because I'm in a desert. So let's get started with some swarming. I'll show you what that is. So swarming is you grab a large group of mobs, um, and then we want to do damage to them. So I'm going to change these around a little bit. I'm going to use an area effect, and I'm going to have a backup area effect. And typically, if I'm doing this for experience, I will use my charm song also. Um, and then I also have the option to just use one damage over time spell. This only hits one target. This one that's blue will hit any target within range of me. Uh, and so will this one, even though it has less of a range. Uh, it doesn't show any details on here, but this has a range of 35. I don't know what that measurement is. And then this has a range of only 30. So to hit with this thing, and the mobs have to be closer. And these are different instrument based. So this is a, this Denon's Disruptive Discord, or DDD as it's called, uh, requires a horn, which is a brass instrument. And we are going to use that. So when we're doing damage, we'll be using that while we are pulling, we are going to be running with the drum using Solo's Accelerando, which is percussion-based drum. What we're going to do is we're going to pull a bunch of these scarabs, so let's grab a whole bunch. Okay, so we've got a bunch of different creatures here. Um, in this case, there's a couple key things with swarming. You need to get mobs that all have the same run speed. So we don't grab the cats. As a general rule of thumb, cats run faster in EverQuest than other mobs, so we're not going to grab any cats. You need a big open area. This here is perfect. And all the same type of mobs. I don't know about the spiders. I think the spiders have a weird hitbox, which means it's harder to get them in range of your song. Uh, snakes out here would probably be good if you're doing this for experience, because this would be good experience around 18, I think, maybe? No? Actually, Northern Desert Rose sucks. These mobs would be green by 18. Um, there's some orcs in these desert madmen. Uh, some of them will be casters, same with the dervish cutthroats, so we're not going to pull those. Uh, you might have saw me trying to use a throwing weapon earlier to get one of these out of one of those camps, because I know there's a higher level mob in that camp. Um, everybody else in EverQuest seems to run clockwise. I run counterclockwise. Maybe it's because I'm left-handed. So when we got a bunch of them, we kind of run around in circles. And the goal is to get these separate mobs to look like one big clump. So we're going to keep on running it uh, with our drum. And we're going to get all these guys in a little clump. And this also helps to make sure that if, since we pulled from all around the zone that we don't actually get any mobs that sh you know show up late. So I might come over this hill and there will be some more coming in and I'll have to be careful. But this looks like a lot and as you can see now it just looks like one big clump. You can hardly tell that there's like half a dozen of those in there. Um, and then what we're actually going to do to swarm with this is I have another hotkey. Uh, for movement. So you can see W, S, D, and A for my turning, and then where it says strafe right, right here, is I have the letter E, which is right next to W. So I, if I hold both of them down, I am running forward and strafing right. In a request, the way the mechanics work, uh, running diagonally is actually like a multiplier. It's like Pythagorean's theorem A squared plus B squared. Anyway. Basically, um, you can see me moving forward, and it looks like I'm running slow. If I actually turn and run diagonally, I'm actually running faster. Uh, so we're going to take advantage of that strafing uh, fact in the game mechanics 
to run faster than these guys without using our speed song. So I'm going to switch over, turn off the solos, and I'm going to switch the drum out, and I'm actually run forward and strafe. Uh, let's avoid this madman here and stuff. So I'm going to run forward and strafe. Here we go. So now we're not running with our speed song anymore. And then what I'm going to do is actually I have EQ in a windowed mode, so I am going to for a second click out let go of the keys, click back in, and now these keys are being held down for me by the game mechanics. So EverQuest in windows mode, hold the keys down, click out, let go of the keys, click back into EverQuest, and now I'm strafing. And then I'm going to hold down my right mouse button, so you'll see the pointer disappears as I hold my right mouse button down, and I'm strafing right and turning left. And I'm going to fire up that Denon's Dissension, Dennis and Disruptive Discord by using song 4, which happens to be key it's actually song three, which is key five. So there's Denon's Disruptive Discord. And right now it looks like it's not doing anything, because I'm actually not hitting anything. I have to actually get in pretty close to these. And you'll see them in the bottom left side of the screen, possibly. Again, with the recording software, I think I haven't matched the resolutions up right, so you may not see them. But we can get in pretty close to show them on screen. And you might be able to start actually hearing this swarm of mobs that I have behind me coming in now. In fact, I'm going to use tab target to target one of these so we can see what their health looks like. Oh, and since since I'm higher level than these and this is just a sample, because these are all green to me, I'm just going to use the Dennis Disruptive Discord without the horn just so you get an idea of what it uh, looks like. And this, these don't die quite as fast. So you can start to hear them. They get louder. Um, Actually, let me show you what this looks like. So, if I have an instrument equipped and the song is working, it will, you can see some damage at the bottom of my screen coming in, but once I get close enough, you will see the animation for the instrument song going off. There he is. So now I'm actually playing the instrument and hitting the creatures, and you can kind of see them on the left side of the screen there. These guys are really slow, so. Uh, I can actually get them pretty damn close and they also have a hitbox. So the way the hitbox works is the monster actually it's kind of their belly not really their front that they take damage at but for me my hitbox is actually a teardrop shape a tail with a tail behind me so if I were running straight um, they would be able to hit me but I'm running at an angle so they can't so you can see them they're starting to die now in fact if you're really good I can go uh, use this chords of dissonance which has a shorter range and I have to get in really close and you can see I hit him and then I can switch back and forth and now you can see the damages are two different damages 30 and 13 and I just got hit if I were swarming for experience that would be a death but these mobs are all dead uh, and I can stop my song so these different numbers are for the damage that it's doing 30 is the amount of damage I do with the horn with Dennis disruptive discord when the monsters or mobs are running towards me. Uh, I used chords of dissonance without a uh, loot, so with the horn, so it's doing hand damage or singing damage of only 13, but it does add the extra damage. The downside is you have to get in close, and as you can see I got hit, and that was too close. So if you're doing this for practice, the goal is to never get hit. So Northern Desert Row is actually good for that. You can come out here play around with these scarabs, grab a couple, maybe three, four. Uh, nobody ever usually fights these, the experience is not that good, none of the loot stacks. So uh, it fills up your bags really quick and none of it sells for anything to players so you pretty much have to sell it to a vendor. Uh, it's not worth anything. So nobody hunts these for experience. Uh, but if you're killing them in masses, you will get experience if you're the right level range. But that also makes it good out here because uh, actually the scarabs are really good to practice on for two reasons. And we saw earlier they are dubious. We conned one earlier, it was dubious, which means it's not killing sight. Um, so if I'm pulling a swarm and there's some players out here who are trying to get experience, the scarabs I pulled will not try to attack that player. 
Uh, it's really important if you're swarming that you try to be as courteous to the other people in the zone as possible. Uh, so I try not to uh, swarm in places where it will disrupt the people who are leveling. In this case, there's really only a couple people in the zone. These guys are probably experiencing, but they're probably somewhere else, and they're probably not fighting scarabs. The spiders drop good stuff, these doom tarantulas. So they're probably fighting those. And even if you're fighting a doom tarantula and like all a dozen of those scorpions go right across, or scarabs go across. In fact, we saw some guy fighting the little undead over here. Um, even when all the scarabs went across him, they aren't going to switch for me to him. Uh, so it's not going to hurt them. Uh, but it's possible when you're pulling a swarm that you can run around and because I'm run really fast because I'm a bard your swarm is going to be way behind you and you have to be really careful not to run them across other players because if that player is in the zone fighting the same type of mob they will help their friends out and attack that player and if you've got 50 mobs and a player standing there it will kill that player if I had 50 mobs behind me and this damage happened, I would have been dead. I've done it before. Uh, <laughs> one shot, there's no saving it. You pull 150 mobs, you get swarmed, you're dead. Uh, so it's a good idea to try to practice on something like these scarabs where you can just run around and play with the mechanics of it. Uh, turn your speed song off. Turn this inspect off. So turn your speed song off get used to this strafing thing. Some people will probably want to bind their left strafe key to something else and use those and and, and do a clockwise circle. Uh, or you can use the right strafe and do a counterclockwise circle. Um, so the reason why that works is if we look at my top down view of my player, there's basically a hit box that I have where mobs can attack me. Um, and if you get low on health, you can try to run away from the creatures. Like if you're fighting one, it's too tough, you can run away. So the, the hitbox is not a complete circle around me. It's actually kind of a teardrop shape behind me. Uh, so you can picture the mouse moving around in a teardrop shape. Uh, so what that means is there's a tail behind me of a, with a hitbox where mobs can hit me if they look at my back. So you'll notice when I'm strafing, I'm actually running in a circle and my tail is actually off to the side so as I'm running this way my tail is over here the mobs are over there they can't hit this this teardrop shape of my hitbox and uh, attack me so the strafing is two things one moves you faster than the creatures that you're fighting and two it keeps this tail in the back of your hitbox from being in the range for those mobs to hit you uh, now I got in too close here and I got hit, so again, practice on some green mobs, figure it out, and then go pull a big swarm somewhere. So that's pretty much how we do swarm kiting. And again, like I pointed out, you want to be really careful where you're doing it. Uh, there is a video where uh, someone actually shows swarm kiting and he talks about being courteous, but he's not really courteous. So try to find a couple zones where there's not a lot of other players fighting stuff for experience or if they are uh, I don't pull around near or through where the experiencing people are camping so for example in the over there <coughs> pardon me in the over there there are uh, players usually experiencing on the zone wall typically they go to what's called ramp which is the zone line the sky fire has a ramp in front of it and uh, and they will uh, fight there. So if you're pulling in over there, try to avoid that area. Uh, I was pulling in my 30s in Firiona Bay, which is the town where a good people can go to Kunark, and there's never a lot of players there. So, And if they are, they're on the opposite side of where you would swarm. Uh, it's just important to be curious about where you're swarming. But what I would suggest you do this Northern Desert Row is a great place to learn. You can also pull the bears in wherever there's bears. Uh, probably West Karana because it's a nice big zone and nobody ever hunts out there. Um, but anyway, I'm going to end this video. Hopefully you guys learned something. 
try this out, practice on some green mobs, figure out how the hitbox works, how the strafing works, how to get your things going, and then go out and kill 100 mobs and get a couple levels, because if you remember right, Collins was 38 last time I did a video. So I'm going to sign off for now, because I think someone needs help in getting their corpse, which is another downside of Clowns Again Request. So I'm going to help them out, and thanks everybody for watching, and thanks everybody who likes and subscribes, and we'll talk to you guys later.